Hi Aries, welcome to your reading for the 3rd to the 9th of April. Wow, that was the first quarter, that was quick. Um, interesting read, when I was shuffling both these cards and the ones I'm going to clarify with, the Black Violet Tarot, the Death card popped up a couple of times, um, and you've got an ending here and you've got the Devil card, so it, it's going to be an interesting week for sure. First of all, you've got, um, you need to get something resolved. No two ways about it. It's not going to be pleasant, it's not going to be easy. You're not getting anywhere. These two swords are just wearing each other down. This is the theme for the read. So very definitely um, something's got to be overcome. You know, just you've just got to force your way through it. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be fine. We shall have a look and see. But um, for now, let's just get straight into it. So we start with the present position, Ten of Swords. Um, normally it's a king with Ten Swords in his back. Definitely done, dusted, over with. This isn't the end of chapter three going into chapter four. This is the very last page, the very last word of the very last page on the very last book of the Harry Potter series. You could go back and read them again, but you won't get those surprises. You won't get that first time thing. That's what this card is. It's like that is done, dusted, end of something, time to move on. Um, your present expectation is the card of stoicism, the card of, of experience and and almost ruthlessness you know you, you've got this you know people go, you think you're heartless so you've even got this little heart glowing in the middle there i'm not heartless at all i'm just telling you like it is very much um king of swords energy is is very mature very experienced been around the block been there done that um it's my way or the highway not in a negative way not in a, an aggressive way just going look if you go that way you get stuck in traffic you go this way, you'll get there, no problem at all. If you choose to go the way you want to go, you'll be like, yeah, fine, told you. You know, it's not a no, 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 no kind of energy. It's just, given my experience, I'm just telling it like it is. So I feel here, Aries, that you're at the end of a situation. It's not, mm, could be major, could be major, actually. I was going to say it's not. Could be relationship as well, because you've got the lovers at the end here. Um, but let's just get into the read a little bit more. Unexpected position, got the devil card. The devil doesn't kick your door down at two in the morning and drag you kicking away, screaming. It just sits on your shoulder going, you're not good enough. You're not tall enough, you're not rich enough, regardless of where you are in life. You can be the most beautiful person you know, you can be driving a Bugatti, and the devil will still whisper in your ear, it's not that good a Bugatti, is it? Yeah, not as good as that guy's Bugatti over there. It's just that little whisper. And if you go, oh, take a hike, it just takes a hike, the devil card. You know, it just wants to kind of stir up a little bit of trouble. So this is acting as a warning here, going, look, you know, you, we all have days like that. You can choose to carry the burden with you or you can choose to put it down and walk away from it. And I think that's what you're going to do. Next week itself, it's a tricky one because you've got the Destiny card, which in this deck replaces the Wheel of Fortune. So the train is in the station. It's time to get on board. The universe is like, come on, this is over with. As one door closes, another one opens. I think when this door opens, though, you don't know where it's going. It's a bit, hmm. Should, I, I tell you what it is. You, you, someone said, get to the station, get on the train. It's leaving in three minutes. And you run to the station, you get there, and the three trains are leaving in three minutes. It's like, which one? You know, the universe just goes, just pick one. It doesn't matter. One's going north, one's going south, and one's the overnight going west. You know, one's fast, one's slow, one's really slow. It doesn't matter. Just pick, let your instinct rule your guide for a minute. Jump on a train. If you get the wrong one, the universe goes, ah, we didn't make it clear. We wanted you to say that one. We'll start rerouting you, bringing you back round again. You know, when you get those sat navs that get recalibrate, they make that little leaping noise. That's what the universe will do. So trust the process. You know, you're supposed to get on a train. There was only supposed to be one in the station, but there was three. I picked the middle one or I picked the red one. It doesn't matter which one you picked. I picked the emptiest one. I picked the fullest one. Just get on board. Just get on to the next adventure and see where it takes you. And then the long-term future, one, two, three, could be a relationship because it's the lover's card. It's you with a significant other or you with your higher self. We are connected to everything in the universe. This is the red tie that binds the idea that there is someone out there for us in this whole wide universe. Um, there is your soulmate. And also it talks about um, not wanting to go on to a, on a journey alone in a more traditional ride away um, Smith deck. There is a mountain in the background and it, it's like there's, there's some quite big challenges in life that we have to go through. Do you want to go through them alone or do you want to go through them holding hands with a significant other? I know which I'd prefer. 
Um, and again, it's up to you. Some people go, do you know what? I'm quite happy living on my own. I'm, I'm too old. I'm too rich. I'm too bored. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, I got married five times and realised marriage wasn't for me. That's absolutely fine. In that case, this car is you and your higher self. It's you taking the higher ground. Um, let's clarify. Queen of Swords on top of the ten. Very nice. Very nice indeed. So after that clarity, after that sort of walking in and catching your partner with somebody else you just go right time to go I'm, I'm moving on i'm generating new ideas i'm generating new thought process i'm on top of the hill i can see for miles the storm clouds are clearing it's all coming clear to me now the the queen of swords is is very stoic look at that ten queen king yeah there's a real sense it's it's head over heart this you know when someone's talking to you going are you sure this person is right for you and it's not a heart decision which goes it's all warm and fuzzy this is a head decision you know you know what job they do you know how old they are you know when they've said things that you've maybe found a little bit inappropriate you, you've got all the information already to hand so i always say to people if i asked you the question do you see yourself with this person in five years time there's a na there's always a nanosecond where you go uh and if, if, if you pause then it's a no there is no maybe in this i don't think it's yes or no um i'm i'm on my second and final wife and as far as i'm concerned when the boys leave university i'll be stood next to her when we're in a retirement home dribbling into our soup it'll be next to her you know it, it, i just don't see any change i don't see any reason to i've found my soulmate i'm quite happy so if you can find yours and if it isn't that person then that's what this queen of swords is doing She's been hurt in love before, but she's prepared to, with a sword out, you know, go, OK, I'm prepared to try it again. Let's go through the whole process. My way or the highway. Ghost card. This is a card of, um, oh, let's have a look. I've only, it's, it's come up a lot, you know. This is the second time I've used this new deck, the Black Violet Tarot. Um, and it's, the ghost card is one of those at the back of the book. She's got two or three others that are actually on the website. This is Haunting Regret and Self-Compassion. The ghost card features a woman who's confronted with a ghost who holds out a small bouquet of flowers as a gift or maybe a peace offering. If you look at their faces, they both seem to recognise each other. Neither one seems shocked to see the other, but the woman seems afraid of the ghost and what she represents. Ghost represents confrontation between past and present. Healing from past trauma, regret for things you did or didn't do, fear that your past will be uncovered or your past will inevitably determine your future. This card empowers you to make peace with your history. There's no need to hide or be ashamed or be scared of it. Understanding where you came from can be a powerful step in determining where you want to go and who you want to be and what mistakes you can learn from. And it says here as well, notice in the illustration the gowns on each figure are blowing in two different directions, suggesting they're meant to move in separate ways, which inevit inevitably they will. But for now, they're looking each other in the eye, confronting each other, even if it feels uncomfortable. They're doing the work to understand each other before they move on. Love it. Love it. So again, a lot of times with tarot, it, it's not a fortune telling thing. If it was, I'd tell you what the numbers for the lottery were next week and we'd all be millionaires, happy days. It doesn't do that. I think what it does do is it goes, are you sure about this person? Are you sure about this job? Are you sure you did the right thing when you had that conversation? And it's just a little, it just, it just muddies the pond. It puts a stick in the pond and just stirs it up a bit to see what's in there. Is the treasure? Is there a crocodile? Is there nothing? The water is just clear, and do they become clearer, or do they stay muddy? And that's what that's what taro does. It's a it's a finger post in the mist, yeah. And the more you get into it, the more you let it absorb, that the clearer these things become. I like that card. I like ghost. Eight of swords. Um, yeah. We, on top of the devil energy, this is a very constricting card. It's a it's a sort of scarcity mindset card. You know, woe is me, you know, it, my job's not as good. It, it's doing everything the devil wants you to do. You're not tall enough, you're not good enough, you're not rich enough. It's like, really? Because a lot of this seems to be of your own making. You know, those bonds aren't super tight. Just undo them. You know, you, you, this hand here can almost come down and just undo the knot. Or, or you can certainly get your hands out of those back. You know, she's deliberately drawn this so this person is not constricted. This person is lightly tied up. And there's got a blindfold on it. You just you can almost raise your eyebrows and pull that off. So just be careful. You're not you're not living in a in a fantasy land. You know you kind of go, no, woe is me. And it's like, really, is it that bad? 
you know, there's something you need to get over. There's a resolution. There's something from your past, possibly something that you know you need to confront. And the, these three cards here are all talking about it needs to happen. You know, change is inevitable. The one thing that's constant in the universe is change. You got the death card twice when I was going shuffling through these. Death is about change. It is just change. The only constant in the universe is change. There's change coming. You know, you, you just need to kind of shine a light on it, open the door and go, OK, I'm brave enough to do this now. I'm brave enough to get through it. And then next week, Page of Swords. Love it. Um, Page of Swords is... is You've got these storm clouds again. You're getting a lot of sword cards, aren't you? Um, the Page of Swords is one of the one of the nicer sword cards, in my opinion. It is a card of impetus and momentum and going, do you know what? I can't wait any longer. I just want to get on with this. It's cutting through the red tape. Again, these butterflies, these about idea generation and, and setting your ideas free and setting your your dreams free. It's like, I know what I want to do. And you know they're so fragile as butterflies fly away. You think a good gust of wind will take them all away. Stronger than you think. They look fragile, they're not. Yeah, And these things are ready to, to take flight. In this particular deck, the True Black deck, it talks about the um, the pages God is, is entangled by brambles and he just cuts through them with the sword and he releases all these berries and this is all the the fruits of your success. You know, by doing this, by kind of taking a sword or, or kind of cutting out the cancer, you know, you just cut it away and it just releases you freedom, future, brightness, lovely. It's, it's just a great card, the Page of Swords. I love it. Another one of the new cards, Portrait card. Now this one I do have to go onto the um, website for because I can't remember this off by heart yet. Um, just bear with me. I'm sorry I didn't mean to get this up on screen beforehand so we wouldn't have this. So can I ask, you know, the, the f how many of you are here? About six of you? The six of you that come to my channel regularly, just talk amongst yourselves. You know, how's your week been? All that kind of stuff. We'll get there, don't worry. Right, let's have a look. Where are my tabs on here? Uh, bookmarks there we go there you go got her lovely right so what Heidi's done is there's, there's a couple of things in in her deck where she just thought you know as I'm doing this there are some cards that she's wanting some images she wants to draw and some things she wants to you know talk about this one talks about identity representation and legacy you know portraits live on long after you're dead and it, it you know if you're questioning what legacy you're going to leave behind, will the memory of you adequately represent who you really were? And do you want it to? So this is taking almost, it's, it's almost a mirror card, isn't it? Take a long, hard look at yourself. You know, when you go to bed at night, were you the better person? Did you do the right thing? If you, if you died tomorrow, what would people think of you? And if you could sit with those individuals, would you go, really, that's what you thought about me? Or would you go, oh, that is so sweet. Yeah. So... I think you need to be the change you want to see in the world and you need to be the better person all the time. A classic example of this would be you're driving home at four in the morning and there's no other car on the road and you come to a roundabout. Do you slow down, indicate and look both ways? Or do you drive like, I know there's no one else around, I'm just going to boot it. I don't. I always drive like I'm taking my test. You know, just in case there's a man walking his dog or there's a police car waiting around the corner. Or just so that I don't spin out of control and go, well, that was foolish. For the sake of getting home one minute earlier, my car's now in a ditch. That's going to be very expensive. So, yeah, just make sure you're doing the decent thing. I mean, I'm seeing that you are. What I would say is there's no heart. There's no heart energy this week. It's all about the head. It's all about making cold, hard decisions. It's all about coming to terms with your past. It's all about coming to terms with who you are now and, and how you want to be seen in the future from this day forward. You know, I want people to see me as a strong kind determined person you know so get over this issue it could be quite tricky um i don't think it's that bad i think there's there's a little bit with the devil here there's a sense of it being uh, mountains and molehills you know the devil does love a good uh, a good exciting conversation it's like no it's it wasn't as bad as that they're talking about you behind the back no they're not they're just having a conversation about what they watched last night that's just what you think you know the devil's trying to make you paranoid it's trying to it's, it's trying to tip you off balance a little bit. And there's no need. You're in a great place. You're doing the right thing. So we've got... I've started to pull these um, animal spirit, spirit animal cards. 53 Seahorse Spirit Watch and Wait. 
one of the things about seahorses, of course, is they mate for life. So that's uh, very nice of you to love reading. That is you committing to somebody or somebody committing to you. It doesn't have to be romantically. It could just be, you know, friends. It could be um, friends, family. So, hovering gracefully, the seahorse observes with the perspective of one who is not engulfed by the drama. Nice. Remaining at a distance from all the turbulence, seahorse spirit appears at this time to remind you of the need to be neutral and gain perspective. Your message from seahorse spirit is, not my circus, not my monkeys. I've never heard of that before. That sounds good. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Spirit wants you to know that even if you're tempted to jump into the fray to try and fix things, the best way to serve yourself and others right now is to remain calm and simply watch and see. Another message here is whatever your query, Seahorse Spirit asks you to step back from it, be willing to explore things from different angles rather than a single one, and just observe what is possible. From the perspective of a position of the neutral observer, you will discover a myriad of opportunities and a deeper understanding of you of what you seek and why, and you will know beauty, truth, love and wisdom. What a great way to sign off the reading. So yeah, go and discover some beauty, truth, love and wisdom, and I will see you next week for more of the same. Take care.